There's this one. There's a big major secret to hair dye. There's a big no-no. Do not use, not use hydrogen peroxide or an enzyme or stain magic on hair dye. That, that is a lesson I learned because I did not know and that's what I used in our bathroom where my little girl decided to dye her hair one day without my knowing it. I would have, if I had known she was going to do that, I would have said, don't do that in our master bedroom. <laughs> so what we use is we power gel, and I don't have any here to show you anything, but I did in the video. Red relief, and if all else fails, which is what I ended up doing, it's a cookie cutter, like that one right there. Agitate it, extract, red relief. Iron, extract, and it was gone. This is a good time to talk about the cookie cutter, isn't it, Bob? Yes, it is. Mona. Okay. Since you can claim to be an expert at this, our primary objective here is that what we're going to replace with must exactly match. Yeah. And that's the idea behind this, but yeah. not all spots are going to be this big, or yeah. well, they, they might be, be bigger, smaller. Yeah, but it, it's, it's a good general purpose approach. Mm -hmm. What, because uh, he's an installer, he knows right away what the pile direction yes. here is and everything. And that's the other the next thing I was going to say was pile direction is so crucial. Yeah. Here I've got my piece of carpet, got a piece of paper here, pencil. And as you watch, you'll see this paper move in this direction because that's the pile direction. What's well, pile direction? Here's your cut pile. When they're making the carpet, okay, actually they make it upside down, it's going through this gigantic sewing machine loop. There's a little knife edge that slits it, but it doesn't stop to form the loop and then move to the next. It just keeps going. So actually, every one of those tufts is bent in a certain direction. Installers know that when you're putting two pieces of yep. carpet together, they must have the same pile direction. It can't be like this because then the light reflects differently and you can see it. We have to do the same thing. Why is that important? When he take, gets a plug out of another piece of carpet, it's crucial that he makes sure that it matches the pile direction exactly. If it's off even a little bit, it will magnify the fact that this was a patch. And the actually the patch could be perfect be flawless and it's going to stick out like a sore thumb. What are you doing? Take coming surgery or something mm -hmm. here? Well, find the patch out the closet. Or well, first thing we always do is ask if they have more of the carpet. <coughs> a lot of people are OCD like me where they save everything. As an installer, when we sell carpeting, we always ask or tell, I should say, as we do tell customers, even if the piece is size and that's all that's left, wrap it up, put it in a baggie take it somewhere where mice or something won't get at it. Attic or whatever. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, for that very reason, because they look at you funny like, well, I don't want all that around. Well, you know what? Not everything's going to clean out, especially after you pour God knows what on it, scrub it with a steel brush. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because even if you do get it out, then, you know, you've got an abrasion mark, and they call you back the next day and go, well, you got the stain out, but what about the braiding mark? Well, I didn't do that. Do you want it cut out? Because that's about your only other option. On these, there's a adjustment for the the center, okay? Because you want to go make sure you're locked into the to the carpet really well, okay? You want to get it all the way through the carpet and into the pad. You don't want to slip and slide. Yeah, it, it's cru crucial. It's anchored, in other words, okay? Well. Here's the other thing, and I found this out the hard way, but it's a trial and error thing sometimes. Let's say somebody did spill a glass of Kool-Aid there. Okay, we're gonna have a spot in the pad anyway. I've learned to keep extra pad on the truck 
from a half inch rebond than which is typical. Uh, or sometimes a customer can even tell you what they have prior to that. Or if you go look, I pull a register and look to see at the register what the pad is, if it's a rebound or rubber, if it's half inch, three eighths, if I go out to do the estimate. Because a lot of times on repair work, I won't even go out and do it. I'll just go look at it first and say, yeah, I can fix it. No, I can't, okay? And then I'll know if I need to bring pad. And it's just more sales for you too. Uh, once you get it locked in, you wanna go ahead and keep your hand firmly on it and rotate the blades. And I'm on the table right now, too. Now I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I didn't do it. And there's your plug. And yeah, I was on the table and I did get into the pad. Okay, so you can adjust it accordingly. I just wanted to make sure I got the cut. So if you do that, of course, now you're set. You can't change this anyway. Okay. They don't have any carpet anywhere. But so before you cut it, and they say, no, don't do this. <laughs> I always go behind a closet door or at the end of a walk-in closet because of the traffic. You want to try to match it up as much as possible for wear. Okay, Don has his favorite. He takes it outside and roughs it up. It? Yeah, what's wrong with that? I mean, you want it to look as good as possible. It's 15-year-old carpet yeah. and it's all you smashed want it down nice. and filthy. You, you put it out in concrete and One of the things it until it looks too, about I told the same. Don it happens. I have customers all the time volunteer and go, you know what, Bob? I got a piece at the garage. Great, let's go out and look at it. You might have to clean it first. It might be that dirty, but the match might really be good after you do that. Now, are you going to be able to clean it and plug it the same day? Nope. Um, even with pressure sensitive tape, that's what Don has here. Okay, it comes with the kit. You place it in underneath, you peel it back. I don't use this, I use the iron because I know it's never going to come out, even under a cleaning circumstance. With this, you might get a little pucker at the edges. I seam seal too. You want it to look good, professional, uh, and and this is bigger than the right the hole you made so that you can open her up, twist it around so that this part is right on the pad. This part is stuck to the underneath of the old carpet, and then when he puts his plug in, it glues to the rest. One other thing that perhaps Don knows or doesn't, that if you're having a directional question, you can't decipher which way that carpet's going because you want the plug to look good. Look at the back of the carpet. This is something inspectors and some installers know. It, it doesn't have an arrow on it and you can't decide by rubbing it or doing the paper test or using a comb. Some people use combs too. The wide beads on the back of a carpet are always in the width. So now you know when you look at the back of that carpet which way it is. That will tell you. Then after you get it to that point, it's a matter of fact of 360ing it until you get it because you know which way the, the beads are on the back. You have wide beads and narrow beads on the back of the carpet. Right yep. now? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Yep. I have to know that because of Nell and I being inspectors. If we're looking at a side match problem, we're and there's no arrows anywhere. I have to pull that back, look at the back of the carpet to make sure beyond a reasonable doubt so I don't blame an installer for something that he didn't do. If it, it is in fact a, a die lot problem, okay, there's no arrows. How do I decide if it's facing the right way? We look at the beads, okay? As simple as it may sound, it's true. And all of them are made that way, not just one or two of them. So when you have a directional problem, that's one, one way you can look for it. But really, guys, this is a good add-on for your companies. And yeah, there is a knack to it, and I take it for granted because I've installed for so long, but at six to eight repairs a week we do. It is great money, it really is. And people, you know what, if you tell them they got to spend $7,000 to replace their carpeting because of a bad area, or they can spend 90 to $150 for you to do the plugs, what do you think they're going to do? And you're looking at $100 an hour to take and do plugs like this. You just saw how quick it came out. Yeah. And especially if you ever go to a cool light. And there's install classes in Georgia. You can go to repair classes. They'll teach you this stuff. You don't have to be an installer. It's a great add-on if you want to go to schools on it. 
Uh, you can ask them now. We do a ton of repair work, restretches, patches, seam repairs. It's excellent stuff, and it all involves stuff like this as simplistic as it looks. Yep. Really. It's Thank great you. stuff. Thank you, Bob. You bet. What you want to do, you don't have to. You know, you never experiment on a customer's carpet. So if you're planning on doing this, I suggest you Everybody get, has to learn somewhere. I suggest you go to a carpet store and very often they have some leftover carpet or whatever and get some and, and uh, play around with it and learn how that works.